Hello and welcome to another episode of Attacking Third, a CBS Sports Soccer Podcast. I'm Sandra Herrera, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports. I'm joined today, as always, by my colleague and co-host, Lisa Roman, broadcaster and analyst for CBS Sports. On today's show, we've got a United States Women's National Team preview versus New Zealand. The United States is going to close out their two-game series Quick reminder before we get into everything, uh, subscribe to us on YouTube and give our videos a thumbs up, please. YouTube.com slash Attacking Third. You can get all sorts of exclusive USWNT content, previews, recaps, interview, all right here with us on A3. Let's talk about it. Good morning, good morning, good morning to those of you joining us in the live. Lisa, how are you doing today? Good morning, Sandra. Uh, we are like back on our stuff this week with essentially an episode a day at this rate this is where we are right now an episode a day we're not even in nwsl season the (laughs) world cup like actual preparation hasn't even started yet we're just like easing ourselves back into it psych five days a week i get to hang out with you uh chat with you interview some great people and and athletes uh which we've got more coming down the pike for everyone so stay tuned like follow do all those things so you get alerts because we're dropping interviews left right and center here um it's a good morning i I tried to sleep in a little bit today but because of the late kickoff tonight for the united states women's national team of course that didn't happen i'm like up and at them early as heck this morning. Uh, but it's good to be jumping on here with you and chatting U.S. soccer. I mean, I'm all about it. What about you? How you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm with you. I had the same thought. I was like, okay, it's Friday. I said, mm-hmm. going to link up with Lisa again. And I was thinking it through because, you know, we've had some cool interviews that have dropped during the week as well. Shout out to Alyssa Thompson. Spent some time with us on A3. Um, and I was like, gosh, I was like, we really have an episode – nearly every day this week and I, yeah, and I was just day. like kind of laughing about it this morning getting ready to hop on and I was like we re- I was like we really said 2023 new years same a3 like it's just that's just uh that's just who we are and how we roll it's good prep it's good prep for this year mm-hmm. like you said it's just the soccer's gonna be constant and everywhere all the time so you and I are just you know getting back to how we're used to doing things here and um it won't catch us off guard when we really do have to no, probably, no, no. you know, link up constantly throughout the week. Yeah. But I'm practicing um, my, my constant my constant intake of coffee right now. So I'm just constantly caffeinated. Yeah. It's it's great, you know. Yeah, no, I'm 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 with you 100. percent I'm still I'm still in the water phase of, of my morning, so still drinking all, all my water. But uh, you know, it, it's good prep for us. It's, and and of course we're we're here to talk. We're here to preview the United States Women's National Team. So uh, it's good prep for them as well because this is the second uh, friendly for them against New Zealand. They kicked off their 2023 with their annual January camp, but this time in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, across the globe, uh, and capping it off with a uh, with a pair of friendlies. And you know we we watched that first game. We previewed that first game. We recapped that first game. Um, and it was a big, it was ultimate, ultimately a big win four zero win, but there was a, a bit of a tale of two halves. We got to talk about and break down each 45 minutes. We chatted a little bit about how perhaps it was, um, you know, very, very pre-season-y bit of rust mm-hmm. for the team, uh, going yeah. in, into this match against New Zealand. No, uh, no goals in that first half, all of them coming in the second half. And the substitutions making big, big impacts for this team uh, in that game that ultimately kind of just on paper looked like it was a blowout, right? But uh, it's going to be interesting to see for this game to close things out uh, what type of adjustments there might be in this second game because there's a there's going to be because of the quick turnaround um, and the player rotation is is you're just going to assume that that's going to happen, but they're also going to be without Lindsay Horan. And let's maybe chat about that a little bit. So because of the uh, January camp and sort of the unique uh, experience that this is for the team, this isn't your typical traditional uh, international like FIFA window. So prior to this camp and prior to the matches an arrangement between uh, the United States women's national team and Olympic Lyon, Lindsay Horan's French club team, uh, she will be heading back to France uh, to continue you uh, the season with uh, with Lyon so she is going to be unavailable for this upcoming game and we got to start with that first reactions from you Lisa yeah. and and what do you think this is going to mean for for this second game 
Yeah, I mean, I we talked about it previously about how this is not a FIFA window, and that's why New Zealand squad looks much different than what we will see in 2023 Women's World Cup. It's a lot younger of a crew because um, a lot of their players couldn't get out of their club contracts. And I think that for Lyon, uh, and Lindsay Heron is an incredible part of their midfield and part of their team that they didn't want to lose. But you look at the importance that she also brings to the United States women's national team and, and head coach Vlach Wadonofsky understanding that she's a crucial part to this U.S. roster. Um, so having that a prior agreement before this trip with the club where it, it's kind of like both sides bending a little bit, right? So, oh, well, um, like uh, Lyon, Olympic Lyon saying like, okay, you get her for one game. You get her for the preseason camp. You get her for one game, and then we get her back uh, before we have our match against uh, Montfier. And I think that it's a pretty even balance because Haran then gets to train with the U.S. and she gets to get one game under her belt. But I think it poses some interesting questions and maybe some dilemmas for Black Wadonofsky heading into this second match uh, with the U.S. against the football ferns because uh, Lindsay Horan is a player that saw significant minutes, right? She, she basically played the entire game um, in that first match uh, against New Zealand. So it, maybe that was also a reason, right? Because this was predetermined that she would be leaving after that first match, uh, that first friendly going back to France. So it was predetermined that – hey, she's going to play the full 90 in this first game and then we'll adjust moving forward. But um, I, I wasn't too surprised that this happened. I was a little surprised how we found out, right? I feel like they could have announced this when the roster was named, similar to how they say they said when Crystal Dunn was first called back in, yeah, Crystal Dunn is going to be here, but she's not going to be competing at all. Like, hey, yes, we are calling Lindsay Horan in, but only for half the time, then she will return to play with OL. Oh, well. I think that was a little interesting how they dropped the news, but – I mean, I'm not too surprised about it. What about you? What do you think when you saw it? Yeah, wasn't wasn't too too surprised. I mean, I, I'm I'm actually when you know when we saw that she wasn't going to be available, um, it made me want to like go back and and think of, and and sort of breeze through mm -hmm. maybe some of the releases that we were given. Like, it wasn't something that that we missed, you know? Because I'm with you. Because I'm trying to remember when when the roster dropped, for example, initially, and and getting to sit with Andonovsky um during some of his media availabilities like trying to recall some of that if if he had dropped that nugget um within some of the press conferences as well right but couldn't couldn't really couldn't really recall but uh, we were also talking about doing an episode every day this week so lots of yeah. things are <laughs> horrible I was like, maybe it's on us maybe we do need to sleep in a it's little a, bit or maybe it's like a, a mandatory it's afternoon us. nap today <laughs> It's not them. It's us. I was like, geez, I'm like, is that a, is that an L for us? Like, did, did we drop the ball on that? But, but here we are now we're going to, we're going to talk about it. Um, We're going to talk about it now. Um, You know, I'm thinking about that first game though. Um, And we had dropped our predictions. We're like, like who, like, who are we going to see in the midfield? Like, what are we going to see from this team? And at this point, at this phase of the journey to the world cup for the United States, you and I were like, okay, similar pool of players within this 24 player roster for New Zealand. We're probably going to see a little bit of predictability. And we had mm -hmm. said like, you know what, we're probably going to see Haran, Lavelle, Sullivan. And while we did, we actually didn't see that till the second half. Uh, the starting lineup rolled out looking slightly different. Um, the re-inclusion of, of, of a Mitch Purse in the front line, uh, Taylor Cornia getting nabbed with the star, and then and we ended up seeing her slotted in uh, lower into that defensive mid position. So now sort of the things that we know, right? Lindsay Horan unavailable for this game. Um, Taylor Korniak already having a 45 minutes in this role. Uh, the quick turnaround from, you know, Tuesday to Friday, what could this midfield look like going into this game? Uh, yeah, I think that's a question that a lot of people have to look at. And, and right, hindsight, as I said, that's why Lindsey Rand played 90 minutes in that first match. And maybe that's why we did see Korniak get the start to see how that relationship could develop between those three, Haran, Lavelle, and Korniak. Um, and we were all a little surprised, little, just a tiny bit surprised to see Korniak in that six dropped back much deeper. And I think that 
moving forward in this second match for the U.S. against New Zealand. Um, obviously, Haran will not be in that midfield. I think Rose Lavelle still gets the start in that position, uh, but I think he's going to go with Andy Sullivan in the defensive six role. We saw her in the second half, the second 45 minutes for the U.S., um, and I think right now that's who he's like deciding between. Is it going to be Andy Sullivan? Is it going to be – Corniak is going to be Sam Coffey. Um, and I, I'm thinking that we'll get a start from Andy Sullivan in the defensive midfield role with a substitute in from Sam Coffey. I mean, I'm hoping players that didn't get time <laughs> last game get time, right? That's I'm going to be really honest. And Sam Coffey is one of those players that I dubbed uh, as soon as we saw this roster as, as a player I wanted to get significant minutes with this U.S. team and with this U.S. roster because uh, I think she – is a player, just a rookie in the NWSL last year that can really, really grow into this role. But you have to give her time and you have to give her minutes. And it starts now in this January camp. So uh, I think that we'll see a 45-minute split. This is my hopes and my dreams right here. We'll, we'll get a start from Andy Sullivan <laughs> in the six. Uh, 45 minutes, and then the last 45 will be closed out by Sam Coffey. Um, I think that uh, that's what we'll see in, in that position as well. But then between... Uh, Lavelle uh, in that eight. I'm, I'm. I would love to see a Sanchez also get the start. Uh, Christy Mewis didn't see time last match either. I think that we could see her get minutes in that midfield role as well. Um, Corniak, maybe he'll put her a little bit higher. But I, I'm going to go with. I want. I want to see Lavelle and Ashley Sanchez in there with Andy Sullivan. Yeah, I'm. I'm with you a hundred percent. I think. I, I think that there don't leave any room for for shock or, or surprise. I think at this point, um, you know, we talked about that that previous starting eleven. We were doing the recap about if there if, if we were surprised to sort of see it, and and that was kind of the energy we left with. It's like at this point, we're maybe not going to be too surprised at um, seeing some some different looks for for players in the starting 11, but still leave enough room to, to sort of chat about if it worked or if we, you know, if we thought we want to see them try something else. And like, even like having that starting 11 drop and, and seeing that it was Corniak and, and no Sullivan. And the assumption was that she was going to slot into that role. And also I mentioned how it was like, it was interesting. It was interesting for me. It was curious, but that it wasn't necessarily shocking in terms of like the, the concept of it all. It's like, Hey, like who's our no, tallest yeah. player on this pitch and who could we put in this role? And it's, it's corny egg. Right. So um, it also just reminded me a little bit of, uh, it also just reminded me a little bit of Sam Mewis, who at once upon a time yeah. was, was the tallest player um, on this team and, and who she is and what she brought uh, to this, to this pitch as well. And I think, you know, as we move forward, you know, and, and watching this team as they navigate the re the remaining, what, six months leading up mm -hmm. to the World Cup, that it perhaps isn't just that kind of, you know, this this quote unquote glaring hole of, of this number six role for this team, but maybe it's a combined uh, issue between the six, you know, and the eight. I think there's lots of people who are like, oh goodness, we relied so much on Earth that it that it feels like um with Earth's absence, it sort of feels like it's 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 glaring. But I would also say that that's a counter that's not a counter argument, but that's also a similar argument for uh the absence of somebody like a like a Sam Mewis. And I think that uh, from half to half, when you sort of like when we're going back to Lindsay Horan and we're looking at how the, those two 45 minute shifts went in compared to the touches that she was getting in that right. first half versus that second half. It like the first, it was like, she was almost looking like an, like an extra winger out there at times, like playing very wide and then sort of seeing how things kind of um, uh, adjusted themselves out for, for this second 45 and uh, kind of seeing her touches to connect with players who would then link up with the assist, whether it was, you know, a Rodman or a Sanchez, yeah. you know, kind of providing that hockey assist right at times. Um, and it just, it, it, there for me, I'm just kind of like, geez, like this, like Haran has become one of these integral players, one of these essential players for mm -hmm. Andonovsky in the starting 11s. And it's just, it's like with, the players that are now missing, I think, in these roles, I think there's like, there's almost like a layer of worry, right? There's almost like a layer of worry or concern. It's like, is this another player? Is this a third midfielder 
that we're looking at and is there concern about, you know, those extra minutes on, on, on the legs mm -hmm. or on the knee, you know, this is a player that unfortunately is very accomplished and has accomplished a lot of really cool things, both with club and country over the last year. I mean, Lindsay Rand's a, a, a champions league title yeah. holder with, yeah. with, with Leon. Right. And then had, clinched a spot in the world cup with, with this team over, it was a very busy 2022 for her, but that also includes like navigating a lingering uh, knee injury of her own. And it's like, you don't, you don't want to maybe like overburden a player like that in the buildup to a world cup. Like even like having like the reaction of this release and sort of say, yeah. like, Oh, okay, she's going back to Leon. And at the same time, you're like, why? <laughs> there's like, because there's a game against Mont Montpellier is, tomorrow like and yeah. and that's like a, i would have you're so like she'll at still be point. she'll still be playing it's not <laughs> getting rest it's not like hey we want to conserve haran you know save yeah. her body a little bit no she's still going to be playing a game uh just yeah. with we'll club, see not with country. that's like a lot of travel like you're the opposite <laughs> end of the globe so i'm um, yeah, i think that shows travel. how how important Vlako Ananovsky believes Haran to be for this U.S. team in this midfield to say, yeah, we're going to travel you to New Zealand for a week, right? Or eight days, say, yeah. and then send you all the way back to France so then you can compete in a club game. I think it's a lot on a player's body for sure. Yeah, I think it's I, – I, look, I'm, I'm curious to see how, how Leon will line up uh, in, in their game now that she's, uh, she's right. heading on back. But uh, there's well, there's still some more things to, to talk about here as we look ahead to this this second match for the team to close things out. We're gonna maybe chat about some things that we would like to see players that specific players that we maybe want to uh, get see time in this game coming up. We're gonna break it all down, but first we're gonna take a quick break. Sunday. The page is turning. Can you feel this energy? Joe Burrow and the Bengals take on Josh Allen's Bills. A trip to the AFC Championship is on the line. If you're joining us live, you just saw an NFL ad, and I, I, I feel bad. Lisa, I can't believe I didn't ask you about the Eagles when we actually Thank opened you, up. Thank you, Sandra. <laughs> Hey, to be fair, I always ask how you're doing at the top of these episodes. But now that we're back from the break, I got I, listen. Are you nervous about this weekend and your Eagles? Uh, I'm not nervous, no, because Eagles got these Giants all day, every day. I mean, I'm pumped for this game. It's at home too for the Eagles. Nope, we got it. Seven o'clock too, or I mean, eight o'clock on a Saturday. We got the Saturday night game. No, very confident. I'm excited about this. Pleased about it. No, all good vibes uh, over here in Philadelphia. It's it's a good time to be uh, an Eagles fan for me. Look, I'm I'm living through you, buddy. Sad, sad Chicago Bears era over here. Uh, let's uh, let's hop back into uh, games that are taking place over the weekend. United States going from Wellington to Auckland, going to face off against New Zealand to close out this two game series. And this one is going to take place in Eden Park. Um, let's maybe talk about that a little bit. Um, this team yeah. holding the January camp in New Zealand, obviously mirroring a little bit of this group stage for, for the team, um, and their, and all of the matches that are going to take place, uh, for their group E, uh, playoff game or excuse me, group games in the world cup in 2023. Thought it was cool to kick things off in Wellington and close things out in Auckland. Um, I don't know. I, I think when it comes to, you know, we'll probably get a little bit more reflective on this when we do do the recap. But we had talked about in the earlier preview how maybe we're not going to get a ton out of these games in terms of, um, you know, those lessons or those areas of growth. I think that this team tries to look for when they go up against the various opposition but then maybe a lot of this is going to be a, a huge chunk of this is going to is going to the importance is going to lie within the overall experiences that they get within yes. New Zealand. yes yes um, i think that's a, that's a really good point uh, about it it's more about this is the first time the u.s has been in new zealand and, and competed there and where they're playing tonight friday night in, in the states saturday <laughs> if you're in new zealand um is eden park which is New Zealand's national stadium and it's going to be the host site for the World Cup. The U.S. will play their first 
group stage game there. Their opening World Cup match will be at the stadium that they're playing at today. Um, and also their third group stage match, I believe, uh, which is against a team that is TBD at this point. But I think that experience is also something that's very interesting because this is where they're going to be staying. Right. It, this is they're getting used to it and accommodated. Now, time of year is going to be different. But, yeah, I think that that's more about this trip than the actual competition against New Zealand is. Yeah. You know, New Zealand, look, it was scoreless in that first half yeah. in this first game, you know, lined up in a four, four, two. Um, we're pretty organized. Um, mm -hmm. but, but this is a team that's. This is a team that's missing players um, within these two friendlies themselves. You know, not having like their 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 own complete roster. Um, perhaps also looking at looking at this these two friendlies in like a similar light, where it's like, hey, we're we're, we're just eager to to host opposition, and this is the number one ranked team in the world, and we too are getting that experience of traveling within our country and as being hosts. Um, but you know, the, the, the tone of that game quickly changed in that second half, you know, all those good ideas in the, in the first 45 minutes for New Zealand, um, clogging things up, dipping things like sort of snatching things out in terms of, uh, you know, the USA trying to maybe play centrally a little bit there. They were really good at disrupting that, but they were not so good at perhaps, you know, absorbing mm -hmm. that pressure or, uh, you know, creating those turnovers or disrupting those passes and then turning them around and trying to generate attack. Like we didn't see that from, from New Zealand. I don't believe, you know, they too didn't record uh, yeah. many shots in that first half. I don't memory serve is correct. They didn't have an attempt on target um, coming out of that first half. So uh, I'm a little curious what type of adjustments they might make. Are we going to see a similar formation? Are we going to see a similar attempt to, to try to frustrate, um, you know, the U S team early in this, in, in this first half. And, and I think maybe coming out of that first game out of that first half specifically, I do wonder if we might see uh, from Ananoski and the coaching staff, the, the player rotations that we might see in this game, are they going to be perhaps some of those quote unquote game changers that we saw in the, in, yeah. in the second half of this game, like instead of coming off of the bench, are we going to see a start for, for a Sanchez? Are we going to, to see a start from a Trinity Rodman? Um, is Lynn Williams going to be given an early half hour versus a later half hour? Um, yeah. I'm curious about it. Yeah, I think those are really good questions. Um, I, I think we'll see a little bit of a shakeup. I'm hoping we will. We saw Swanson, Morgan, and Purse uh, get the start in that first um, match or first friendly against New Zealand. But if mm -hmm. we see that front three, Sandra, like, I'm not going to be surprised. I'm not. I'm really not because he likes consistency without Sophia Smith there at this camp and in this roster. Um, this is a, a lineup we're looking at, especially Swanson and Morgan. Maybe we could see yeah. a rotation for Purse in that role. But I'm, I'm going to argue that Purse played – really well throughout that first half, the first 45 minutes that she oh, was yeah. given. Uh, she was a, an impact player in, in the first half of that game, despite being 0-0. Imagine what she, she could do. She was going 1v1. Yeah, imagine yeah. what Purse can do when the the rest of the team is playing how they did in the second half of that first game um, versus the first half. So I like I would argue to give Purse the start again in, in this point. The, the beauty of this roster is that there are so many – exceptional attacking players that Black Wendonofsky can start. Um, will he switch that up? I mean, I, I think I would like to see Rodman get a start. I, I still want to see Purse get another start. I think she deserves to get another start up there. And I, I mean, I don't think we'll see Lynn Williams the first 30. I think we'll still see her at the end of the game. I'm yes, I'm with you <laughs> on that. For I'm I'm with you. This is like a a, a mutual A3 thing. Like we're we're tossing out the same names here. We want to see these particular players get those get those extended minutes. And I think maybe for me, I again this is the I feel statement for Sandra. I don't want to I don't this part I don't want to speak for you on, but I I'm also looking at these particular players and and want them to get those extended minutes because even though we we both have said it's really about um, this two game series is really about, you know, mirroring the group 
stage of, of, of the World Cup and being in New Zealand and experiencing the travel within New Zealand. Those things are like taking precedence, maybe perhaps what's coming out of the games. I still want to see those particular players get minutes because this coaching staff still has to make an eventual decision about who is going to that World Cup. And maybe this window of time for players is, is one of those final final opportunities to sort of leave those yeah. lasting impacts. I, I have to imagine, I have to, this is this again, I feel this is no sourcing or anything. I have to imagine that if you have players who are going up in these two friendlies and going up against a, a somewhat depleted New Zealand squad, and they're exiting these two friendlies and not having very good games that you're maybe moving on to right, other areas yeah. in the player pool. Um, yeah. Excellent reporting. Shout out to Meg Linehan, who's on the ground in New Zealand. We all keep watching her beautiful photos of the flora and the fauna out there. But, you know, also in um, availabilities with Adonofsky. Adonofsky was asked about that player pool that yeah. this coaching staff has narrowed that down already, that they've gone from about a, a pool of 40 players in consideration for the World Cup roster to down to 32, you know? So it's 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 getting smaller and smaller, I think, as, as the World Cup gets closer and closer. So, yes, I think when we're looking at this, this next game coming up, I do want to see players like Essie Sanchez get extended minutes, Trinity Rodman. I think they have shown what they can do off of the bench. What do they look like when they build into a game? Um, and perhaps in terms of this pool of players, like maybe these are players that you're already looking in, or looking at or looking to as yeah. those game changers, right? Maybe yeah. this coach, that's the next phase. This coaching staff is going to look at, who are going to be their typical starters, but who are going to be those players that they're going to rely on to come into the impact a game and players. impact that immediately. I mean, yeah. we saw that immediate impact from Rodman. We saw that immediate impact from Sanchez. And and to be honest, I don't know if we see them rotate out of that role, right? They, they've proven that they add value to this team. Ashley Sanchez, Trinity Rodman specifically, just talking about those two players, they add value to this team. I don't foresee them dropping off this roster barring anything outside of their control. And, but do we see them shift out of that substitute role and, and play into that starter role? I'm not so sure about that. I, I think that they would have to be out playing the people that are currently in their position um, by loads and loads. And I just, I'm not sure if we're seeing that right now. And and that's why maybe we will see a start from Rodman in the front line alongside a Swanson and a purse. I, I think that would be my ideal front three at this, at this point, because I think Rodman's impact in the game when she came in, in, in that first friendly was so important. And can she do that from the start or is she going to be that relief forward that comes in at the 60 minute mark and then can really shake things up and give opposition a brand new look? And, and that's kind of where I see Rodman's role right now is being yeah. that substitute role that we see. I mean, when she started, you know, getting into these camps, Andrzejewski said, like, hey, this is a young player. It's so it's a yes. player that we want to integrate and work into this system slowly gradually they're not trying to throw too much at her too fast um i think with you know with the appearance against new zealand the other night uh, over the last year or so with the team like i think it's 11 total caps 11 appearances for this team yeah so not only did she have a couple goals but coming out of that game now she's added two assists over yeah, 11 appearances <laughs> over yeah, 11 appearances exactly. with this team so let's let's keep it moving i say let's keep it moving let's 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 you know let's let's see a little more of it you know um let's maybe give her, give her the start and then sub her out at like 50 minutes 60 minutes right that's a, a great way to kind of advance that a bit well let's let's take a look at maybe that starting 11 um, and that first game, and then maybe talk a little bit about what we would like to see in terms of an 11 for this game. Um, they gave Alyssa Nair the start, uh, Crystal Dunn, Becky Sabra, Naomi Girma, Emily Fox rounded out the defense in the back line. The middle third was Lindsay Horan, uh, Korniak, Roosevelt, uh, Swanson, Morgan, and Purse round out the, the, the front line. So when we're looking at that 4 3 3, when we're looking at that original 11, we already know that Horan is going to be unavailable. Um, 
in this game and what do you think we might see for the starting 11 coming into this game what we might see or what i want to see both hit me with okay. both I like doing both of these. Um, I, I like that we got Alyssa Nair for full 90 in that first first friendly. I think we'll see AD French. I think it he'll split time uh, between just two goalkeepers during this this window right here. Um, and I think between AD French and Casey Murphy, I, I would like to give the the toss up to AD French and have her win that goalkeeper battle for the number two. Um, I think. Don't foresee too much change across the back line. I'm going to be honest. I, I think yeah. we'll see Dunn on the left, Fox on the right to start things out. Maybe Cook and Germa get the start in the center back as opposed to Sauerbrunn just because Sauerbrunn played a full 90 uh, in the last match. But um, yeah. And I would like to see a Cook and Germa kind of see how they play together. I, I think Germa is better than Cook and more consistent than Cook, but you still have to build up that role because you don't have Tierna Davidson back at this point. And uh, I'm just not sure about that. I don't think we'll see Sonic get a start. Um, I, I don't think Sophia Huerta will get the start. Mace will get the start. I, the rotation is something that we can talk about different, but mm -hmm. I'm going to go with Dunn, Cook, Germa, Fox. Not too much change up. Uh, I told you yeah. Andy Sullivan in the midfield with Rose Lavelle. And I want to see Ashley Sanchez. Not so sure about that, but uh, that's that's what I want to see. Maybe we'll see a Christine U.S. get the start, a Taylor Korniak even higher, but definitely Rose Lavelle and Andy Sullivan in the midfield. And then uh, up front, I want to see Swanson, Midge Purse, and Trinity Rodman. I do, and I want Rodman to get like 50, 60 minutes. No, I, I'm with you on that. I, I, I'm in agreement in terms of the back for sure. Uh, well, we might see it. Are we going to see Emily Sonnet um, make her return in this game? We we saw Lynn Williams get some some minutes in that first game, coming off the bench, um, right just like shortly after the hour mark, um, mm -hmm. and walking away with a goal. So we also have Emily Sonnet who's making her return to this team um, after missing extended periods of time in 2022. Will she get some minutes in this game? Um, I feel like she could where that's going to be positionally. That's what I'm going to be looking at uh, from this coaching staff. Uh, we saw, like you mentioned, we saw Becky Sauerbrunn get a full 90. We did see Cook come in um, for, for Girma. So maybe there's a little bit of player rotation there. Like, hey, like you'll get a full 90 out of these games, but it'll come in, in parts, you know, across yeah. the two games. So I wouldn't be surprised if we could Girma get an, another start. I also wouldn't be surprised if we see Crystal Dunn get a, yeah. another start. This is, again, we're talking about players making their return to this mm -hmm. team and the energy is going to shift a little bit about the players who are missing because now they're returning and now it's going to get about getting, be about getting them reacclimated as quickly yeah. as possible with just six months out to the world cup. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Crystal Dunn get, get another start. Maybe they want to give her another 45. Maybe they want to see if she'll, you know, if she can go, go the hour, who knows? Um, but yeah, I, I definitely see, Sarabon perhaps getting a rest um, in this game. Um, and I'm very, very curious about <laughs> whether or not we will see Emily Sonnet in this match. I don't I'm think even, Sonnet will start. I just, but don't. I'm even more curious about if she comes into the game as a sub, what they're looking at. Is she going yeah. to come in at outside back? Are they going to slot her in, in the center back? We've typically yeah, seen her uh, uh. at outside back. I don't for that. this team. I know. I know. You're like, you're like, you got your I know. hand on your face. You're like, I, I I'm, a, I'm in distress right now thinking about Emily Sonnet because I'm I, sorry to bring it up and distress you, but we got to I mean, talk about that. We have bit. to talk about it because you're right. She, she traditionally plays an outside back role for her country, um, more of a, a center back role for a club. And I, I, I don't know. I think when you look at the the center backs that the U.S. has right now, between Becky Sauerbrunn, uh, Naomi Gurma, Al Alana Cook, I don't see Emily Sonnet slotting into that role. I, I just don't. Um, but who is she going to rotate in for on the outside, right? Because we saw where to get time. Fox start their last match and then switch over to the left when Huerta came in for Dunn. And uh, I think Fox is a little stronger on the left than she was on the right. Um, just with her ability to cut inside and, and use her right foot to cross the ball in, there seemed to be a bit of a comfort level when she is on the left, just a little bit more familiar. Um, I, I mean, Sonnet's going to play on the outside. We know that. We know that. Listen, I 
don't know if we'll see it, but the thought that's been swirling around in my head coming out of this first game against New Zealand is that this team is still looking for some answers in this middle third. Mm -hmm. And they already, they, they can say they could check that box off and say, okay, we tried the, 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 you know, the, the more attacking player, (laughs) the taller player in, in this lower role. Are we going to continue to do that? Maybe, maybe not. So, I do wonder if they are quote unquote looking for something different because Adonofsky was quoted on that HBO, HBO Max pregame show saying like we want to we want to try something yeah. different. I do wonder if a different thing they could try is some of their experienced center backs pushed higher. A lot of times we hear about when we're talking about soccer when we're analyzing it. We that's, that's another thing that's not uncommon in the global yeah, game. Where that's you sort that's of a shift, natural shift where you, sh- where you make that shift for your center back and push them just a little bit higher into that six role. And I think she's too good and doing too many great things for this team. Girma has a center back, but Girma is not someone who is unfamiliar with that. And I am also curious if they've had conversations with Sonnet about pushing her higher as well. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know if we would it, see it, but I'm just looking at things positionally. I'm just looking at players who you have in and who have played in those roles before. And what else is a different thing that you could try? Exactly. I mean, Sandra, why aren't we the head coaches? What are we doing here on this podcast? We just got to, I like- don't want that. Who wants that job? <laughs> I I mean, that is it's a very natural (laughs) shift and a natural progression to have a center back shift higher into that defensive midfield role completely. The the roles are very similar. The objectives are very similar. You've just got a a tighter space to work with. But we've seen the footwork of of someone like a Gurma that could definitely do that and push higher. It's not going to happen. Lachlanovsky is not moving Naomi Gurma out of the center back role. Yeah, you could put Sonnet there, but you're not going to do that. We're not going to see that happen. A player in Emily Sonnet that has been a defender and and been in the back line so consistently uh, with club and with country. And she's also coming back from injury and he's going to put her in her quote unquote, most familiar position to get her back into that role. This is not the time that you say, yeah, let's try Sonnet up higher. I've, why not Sam Coffee up higher? Hello, that's her role. <laughs> that's what she plays for Portland. Uh, she, we saw. I, I'm surprised when I asked you about like who do you you know who do you, who do you I just think, don't think who we're going to like to see. I don't think we're going to see coffee, coffee get the start. I think we're going <sighs> to see Coffee second 45, Sullivan okay. first 45, Coffee. But like that's literally why you brought Sam Coffee in. Sam Coffee's not going to play higher. She's not going to play an eight or a ten in the midfield. She's not going to play in the back line. Sam Coffee is only in these camps to play the defensive mid role you're yeah. not going to try someone like an emily sonnet there yeah no i'm with you a hundred percent and, and uh, like you mentioned like the window's getting like a little bit it's closing yes, a little it's bit not quickly the time to, to, to try that position. but like i don't know if you and i thought that we would ever see taylor corny at give 45 yes. minutes <laughs> in that position and yet we had to talk about that so never say never. I don't think we could come on the show and say never say never now with the uh, with the buildup so close to, to the World Cup. But um, no, with you in terms of what we could see out of the back line. I, listen, I want to see one of the other goalkeepers get a start in this game, whether it's Casey Murphy or Adriana French. I, I would love to actually see that start go uh, go to AD French. Um, Again, we're getting closer to this World Cup. This is a player who was frequently in, in camps, kind of as the as your number two uh, next to Alyssa Nair, was the goalkeeper mm-hmm. uh, for this team during the Tokyo Olympics. Post-Tokyo Olympics, was not really called into camps uh, anymore. We, we saw more games going to... To, to Casey Murphy, we saw the inclusion of Aubrey Kingsbury into these camps and um, massive 2022 season by French with the current. And uh, they just could no longer not call her <laughs> into these camps. Yeah. And now here she is. So I, I, you know, I think when you're looking, when you're looking at that role specifically and looking for the experience, I think it's, it's French who has it. So I would, while I would like to see French get the start in this one, I, I don't know if, if we will, but um, yeah, different goalkeeper. I'd like to see, I'd like to see some more minutes for Dunn, um, you know, for her, for her to build on this middle third. Um, yeah. I really want to see Sam coffee 
get in the mix in here. I mean, you said it best. She's literally here because of what she's done in the sixth role for the Thorns. Let's try to see it against the team like New Zealand. I also really want to see Chrissy Mewis get minutes in, in this in, in this game against a team like New Zealand. And I think there's a good opportunity to her to play her uh you know back in, in a higher line put to see what she can do um in the eight. This is one of those players that they've tried to slot in at that number six position at yeah. times. There's been a number there's been it almost feels like an endless number of players who have seen time in that role. Um, so I'm curious if they are bringing a Sam Coffee and Sam Coffee get, gets these minutes. Will Chrissy Mewis, you know, be someone who can maybe slide into one of those uh, into those higher positions? Um, I don't think you drop Lavelle from this lineup. I would anticipate that she starts as well. Maybe she she gets subbed out at some point. Um, and I would love to see the continuity in that front line um, include. Uh, of Mallory Swanson. I thought she had a, a massive, massive yeah. game against uh, New Zealand. Um, want to see Purse again as well. I want to see her be able to build off of that. Um, I was a, a little bit surprised that some of the players that they pulled out, she was among the four yeah. at that immediate halftime. I, I thought that maybe she was going to continue, get a chance to continue to build but, into but that we game. Also, we also talked about maybe that was predetermined. Yeah, yeah. They, they, There are certain things that they do want to try to get looks at um, coming out of these games. So uh, I, I wouldn't mind to yeah, – I wouldn't mind seeing that once more, um, a Swanson, Morgan, um, Purse starting three. Um, but how that develops over time in this game, I'm not too sure. Uh, yeah. Maybe we will. Maybe we will get uh, Sanchez and Rodman um, tasked with a different assignment. Maybe they're going to be told, hey, we want to see how you guys – work in you know work yourselves over the course of extended minutes versus coming in and just going fast yeah. so um i'm curious about it i think there's some cool things here to take a look at because on the horizon after these uh two matches it's the she believes cup and it's a little bit different competition that they'll be going up against so so we'll see lisa we'll see if, if we're if we're correct one one player Let's close it out. One player that you will be upset about if they do not see time in this game. Who's that one player? Sam Coffey. No, oh, all right. Let's do it. People probably could have put money on that one that they knew I was going to say that. But you don't call a player like this in and not give her time. This is this is why she's there. She's only got one role to play. Let's see it. Let's see what she can do, especially because we didn't see her in the first game. I want to see Sam Coffey. What about you? Who do you want to see? I'm with you, buddy. Same coffee all the way. Let's go. Let's go. Coffee LFG. energy. Coffee Co energy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's a wrap for today. Thank you all joining us this morning on Attacking Third and here in our preview of tonight's game. You could catch this game tonight, Friday, January 20th. Again, it's another late kickoff, 10 p.m. Eastern. Make sure you tune in on HBO Max or on Telemundo. Make sure you uh, get out there and support. And, uh, of course, we're going to be watching because we're going to do the recap as well uh, and see if we were correct or incorrect to talk about all the things in between the lines. Uh, everybody have a great rest of your day. Download, follow, listen to us anywhere you get your podcast. You can watch us too. Subscribe at youtube.com slash attacking third. Like, follow, leave us some comments because we love to hear from you. For Sandra Herrera and Lisa Roman, this was Attacking Third.